security arrangements, for example, in this region. I just cannot. Well, the Indo Indo Pacific, the use of the term Indo Pacific, uh, and that was accepted by India, by Japan, and by Australia, uh, was an effort to put India into the equation. Because if you speak of Asia Pacific, it's more like South China Sea going uh, eastward. Japan, is China, Australia. But making it in the Pacific highlighted the importance of uh, India. And also, coincidentally, and you know, it's ironic uh, that uh, the ASEAN summit was used as a venue uh, for, uh, for the first time, formally discussing the concept of the quadrilateral alliance. In 2007, Japan uh, tried to introduce that. Australia backed out because uh, they looked at it as too complicated because of uh, the trade relation with, uh, with, uh, with uh, China. But now, uh, it has become uh, very welcome, triggered by a number of things. Number one is the aggressiveness of China in the South China Sea. The aggressiveness of China in uh, the East China Sea. And then Australia noted that China had been uh, giving political contributions in uh, Australia to some politicians there, and also influencing uh, the course of politics in some universities, so they got a little alarm. And then India, uh, they were alarmed by this uh, three-month standoff in the Doklam uh, area in the Himalayas in uh, Bhutan. Uh, they, they, they saw in, uh, China making moves already. So now uh, they're welcome so well. On the side, uh, we witnessed giants uh, done with President Trump of uh, the United States, uh, Prime Minister Narendra <laughs> Modi of India, uh, Malcolm Turnbull of uh, Australia, exactly. and of course, uh, Shinzo Abe of uh, Japan. So basically very rare, it's very hard to put them together, but the uh, ASEAN summit gave them the venue for that. But how exactly will that contain China's uh, own designs in the Asia Pacific region? Well, what, what was, what's going to happen is that uh, it may be difficult to intervene directly inside the South China Sea. So you do it indirectly by surrounding it with the principle of encirclement. And if you look at the geography, uh, China is in the middle, towards the east is Japan, yes. and then south is uh, Australia, and then uh, west India. is India, in the Indian Ocean, and the U.S. is all over because the U.S. has a base in, uh, in the Indian Ocean, Diego Garcia, they're all over. And uh, we are talking of big economic powers there. Uh, U.S. is uh, still number one, you know, whatever they say. I, I heard someone say that uh, the, the China, is now, China is now the number one economic power. Well, not yet. China's GDP is $11.2 trillion, while the U.S. is $18.5 trillion. I made, I made a little computation. If uh, China is able to sustain the growth rate of 6.5% and U.S. stops growing, it would take still about more than eight years for China to catch up, but the growth rate is already declining. In the case of uh, Japan, Japan's uh, GDP is 4.9 trillion, uh, India is 2.2 trillion, Australia is uh, 1.2 trillion, so altogether that's 26.8 trillion against the 11.2 trillion of uh, China. In terms of uh, military power, because, you know, where they, they try to, to minimize the, the, the effect of this, the importance of this. They say, oh, this is not targeting uh, anybody. But, you know, on the side, uh, this was triggered by the, as a counterbalance to the aggressiveness of China. In terms of military power, number one is still the USA, far number one. Number two is Russia and China is uh, number three. Now, num India and Japan are ranked number four and number five, they interchange. Australia is a little far about number 20, number 22, but they're developing a very good submarine force. But how do you think this uh, Indo-Pacific movement <coughs> of uh, these four countries, uh, led, uh, of course, by Donald Trump, how would this benefit the Philippines when it comes to our own maritime entitlements and territory? Well, it, it will benefit us because there will be a counterbalance we hope that it will uh, slow down the aggressiveness of China. They might realize that uh, the aggressiveness is triggering uh, this uh, alliance also uh, to their disadvantage because uh, they're very vulnerable. In the the Indian Ocean is uh, their uh, Achilles heel mm -hmm. uh, because about 80% of their oil trade passes through the Indian mm -hmm. Ocean into the Malacca Strait and there they cannot uh, counterbalance 
the combined force of India and uh, the United States. Japan is also entering the Indian Ocean. On the other hand, uh, could this uh, in fact trigger China to rush into completing its designs in the South China Sea? For example, reclaiming once and for all Scarborough Ocean. Yeah, that, 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 that's one. But that would be a red line. I, I don't think they do that uh, because uh, that's going to trigger action on the part of the U.S. and Japan because that will really be a clear and present danger not only to us but to their own uh, security. But they try. Because, uh, yeah, they're trying. Because uh, if they construct on Scarborough Shoal and they've been warned not to, if they construct on Scarborough Shoal, uh, that would uh, complete the, their strategic triangle in the South China Sea and enable them to have complete control of the South China Sea. And that would be to, that would be to the jeopardy of the security of Japan, of Korea, of Taiwan, of the U.S. In and reality, of course, India also. In reality, do you think the COC, assuming that it is completed and it's uh, legally binding, could it stop China's deployment of military aircraft and other equipment on the reclaimed islands? I, I don't think so. I think China will do what uh, it thinks uh, uh, it needs to do as far as their security is concerned, whether there's a law or not. We've seen that already. Uh, they are disregarding the ruling of the arbitral tribunal uh, with impunity. Uh, they're going to militarize that very soon, notwithstanding the, the assurance as reported by President Duterte that uh, President Xi assured him that uh, they will not militarize uh, uh, the South China Sea. But the fact that President Xi mentioned that in his speech shows that it has a uh, strategic value. It's not just for tourism. How about the assurance by President Xi, allegedly, that uh, they would ensure freedom of navigation? Well, that's uh, that's part of the bur uh, the, 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 the wording, you know. It's kept, kept on uh, repeating. In fact, uh, the uh, Leki, uh, uh, Prime Premier uh, Li Keqiang, uh, made a statement, we are the biggest uh, country in the South China Sea area, so it is our, uh, we are the one uh, uh, most concerned that we will protect uh, peace in the South China Sea. So I almost fell off my chair because uh, when it comes to protection, our problem is uh, the aggressiveness of China. We cannot expect uh, China to protect us from China. How about the proposal that uh, when we start, before we start actual COC negotiations, of course there should be a working draft. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard before that uh, China could be allowed to prepare the draft yeah. by itself and then uh, give it to us, especially the claimant countries, for their producer. Would that be a good idea? That, that would be a good idea. China would but, be very but, but, I'm not, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not so optimistic about this. I think this is going to be another slow process. Uh, because they will also weigh how it will affect their long-term plan uh, for the South China Sea. On the other hand, we ourselves should also be take this very slowly also, not to rush it. I'm sure Vietnam is also looking at this more intensely, uh, also Indonesia. So uh, while it may look like a welcome uh, development, I think uh, when, when the impact sinks in, they will realize that it's uh, not that uh, that simple. It's more complicated than it appears. How, how soon do you think China will deploy military aircraft? Basically, militarize the areas they have already. Deployed. They already have uh, their planes in uh, Hainan. Uh, they have a plane sighted in the Paracels area. Uh, soon, uh, they, they have three uh, runways. Yes. Uh, Pirate Cross Reef, Pacific Reef inside our Sulu Vietnam Zone, and Subi Reef uh, almost uh, just uh, across uh, Pagasa. All of these uh, runways can accommodate practically all the aircraft in their inventory, especially the fighter planes. So when do you expect that to be completed? Even without the, the, the last piece of the strategic, uh, strategic triangle? I think uh, they'll, uh, they'll make a move. Uh, three, three islands there would be enough for them already. Because uh, if they position that, the fighter planes can reach uh, practically everything in the Philippines, uh, Palawan, uh, Basa Air Base, and then uh, their bombers can uh, go beyond, their radars uh, can uh, cover. Not only the Philippines can cover Borneo and even uh, Vietnam. I looked at uh, the capability of the J-11, for example, with a radius of uh, about 1,000 kilometers. It can go beyond, the cover the entire Philippines. Sure, everything is covered. Everything is covered. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you.